two engine mounts, two metallic bearings. Um, one of them's halfway in and is stuck. I wonder how that happened. Hello, what's going on here? It's a red vice. Very red vice. Oh, let's have a look. What's, what's going on? Oh, that handle looks, looks a bit bent. It's almost as if somebody's used it as a press to try and press that bearing into the mount. And then the handle started bending. Who'd be so stupid as to do something like that? Hmm. C-section steel, 100mm by 50mm by 400mm long. A new scriber. Purdy. Looks like I'm marking the ends. Or slightly inboard of the ends. And, oh, centre popping. No, centre popping, I'm drilling. Oh, I've got another bit now. Looks like I'm marking that in the same place. And here comes the centre pop. And if I'm centre popping, I'm drilling, I'm going to drill with a black pouch. That black pouch. Uh, I've seen these used before, so I thought I'd give them a go. It's a step drill, so I've uh, got a small one, got a big one, got a medium one. I think we'll go with a small one first and then we'll use the big one, which uh, actually goes up to 32 millimeters diameter. I actually only want 20. I want uh, 20 mil holes in all the uh, four positions that I've marked on these uh, bits of steel. Let's drill. Let's find the Mankey's drill in the workshop and incidentally I am on the floor because there's no space anywhere else in the shed. So it's the small step drill first. Let's see how it cuts through 10 millimetre thick mild steel. But before I do that I think I'll add a bit of uh, lube. It's actually cutting fluid but lube sounds better. You can add the do blontons or I can do them for you. So I've got to make sure I uh, line the uh, drill up with this centre pop I made as I uh, enter. And uh, let's see how it cuts. OK, I'm getting some chips. It's cutting, but uh, I'm just gradually increasing the force. Now that's another reason for using the cutting fluid. Uh, if you see it starting to smoke, you know you're... Uh, drill is getting a little bit hot. You don't want the drill to overheat, otherwise it'll lose its temper and be useless. So, just adding the pressure a bit more. Sensing I need a bit more lube. And, um, no, don't put it on the drill as it's rotating, because you'll just wear the applicator end away. That's it. Put it on, put it on the actual piece. That's better. You'll notice I'm not actually clamping the work down either. Uh, it's 400mm long, there's a lot of leverage there. It's not a very high torque drill, so I'm not worried about it snatching out of my hands. If it was a much smaller piece, I would clamp it. So we're not through yet. Oh yeah, we just made it through. And... Yep, yeah, that's gone through well. And I think the last one here is 10mm. And just add a bit of a chamfer from the next step. And that worked pretty well. Let's do uh, three more. Let's not. Let's put the big step drill in, get a permanent marker and mark the 20 millimeter diameter so I know when to stop drilling. Uh, you'll see it flashing, but uh, you won't see me marking it because I didn't get it in shot. What I did get in shot was a brilliant advert for CT90 cutting fluid. Uh, it's just handy to have there. The camera, incidentally, is between me and the drill press, so um, I'm surprised I haven't knocked it yet. So, we've got a 10mm hole with a chamfer going through. We're going to try and open it up to 20mm. I'm going to put a bit of lube on. 
that's right just just put it on at the top there and then let it let it drip down catch the drip oh you get cut another drip come in catch that drip there we go right let's see if this works Making chips. You can see the cutting. Oh, there we go. Not the camera. Cutting fluid is just smoking a little bit. Uh, it does get warm, but uh, it's not overly hot yet. Four steps away from the mark, you can see I put on there, which is flashing along. Three steps in, the pressure started to get quite uh, intense here, so I didn't want to. Uh, burn the actual drill and in fact what was happening was that I was actually trying to cut two steps at once. Each step is actually thinner than the thickness of the uh, C-section metal there. So you can actually see I'm trying to cut two steps at once which mm, not happy about. Plan B. 20 mil drill. Cutting fluid. Let's see if we can finish this hole. So, I'm going in. Okay, knock the camera. It's okay, it's looking good, and here it comes. Oh, and that's a bad miss. Yeah, I uh, kept the pressure constant. As you uh, break through, you get like a large burr on the bottom of it, and I should uh, release the pressure as I feel it breaking through, but I'd forgotten about that. It's been a few years, but there you go. Let's do three more. Let's not. Let's get a piece of uh, M20 threaded bar some nuts and washers and we'll uh, tighten them up onto one of the pieces of c-section put the other bit on you can probably see where I'm heading with this now well, I hope you can if not you will very soon so washers on the other side I speeded this up because it's dreadfully boring watching me assemble it and it looks quite funny when you speed it up So, last nut and washer just going on. And let's stand it there. Let's also add a five ton hydraulic car jack, a piece of 10 millimeter thick steel plate precariously balanced on the car jack. And here comes. Here we are, we're back to the back in the room with the engine mount. Two M20 washers going underneath it. There's a slightly uh, larger boss on the, the inner boss, which uh, I need to protect. I don't want to be uh, pressing it in on that. I want to be pressing it on the outside of the sleeve. So I need to make sure it's aligned. That's why I keep getting my head in the way of the camera. So looks about right. So let's just tighten it up and see whether this uh, press works remembering to shut the valve as well so it'll actually work and let's just uh, ease it up and just uh, till it's a snug fit and make sure everything's still aligned get your head out of the way oh knock the camera as well yep yeah. yeah, that looks good a bit more pressure required so i'll add the extra lever now watch the actual uh, c-section just no movement yet just take the strain. There you go, you can see it's slightly bending. It's still bending, no movement yet. Here comes the money shot. There it goes. And we're pressing it in. So I've just made a five ton press. I'm not pressing it in all the way because there's a boss on the other side and uh, I need a, some sort of space to protect that, but I uh, just wanted to test the principle. Release the valve. That's a little bit better than using a vice to actually try and press the metalastic bearings into the engine mount. Hoorah!
So, cup of coffee. Right, uh, let's ask the question why I've disassembled the engine. Uh, that's because when I put it all together it was too heavy to actually move over into the chassis. Oh, an engine mount with a fully driven home metallic bearing. I didn't actually film this, uh, but I managed to press it home with the aid of a little uh, fixing clamp from a milling machine. So we're looking at the engine uh, from above and the engine's actually upside down and you can see the oil filter attachment there on the left. And the metal elastic bearing is fully driven home and you can also see the really bad plating on the actual parts that I've got there. I will be sorting that out. So you can see the hole that uh, is through this little uh, fixing jig piece is uh, larger than the boss which allowed me to press it all the way through with the washers underneath as well. Stainless steel bolts holding on the uh, engine mount to the engine. And uh, we've got some bolts here. Now these are actually too long. I think they're 5 sixteenths of an inch aircraft uh, quality. They will be used later on in the build for something else. But I just uh, thought I'd put them in. And I'll be able to measure once the engine's in the chassis uh, how long they need to be. Intermission? What do you mean intermission? Oh, cup of coffee. Right, okay. I'll let you off. Right, get the engine in. Get the engine in. No, that's not getting the engine in. That's the old uh, timing cover, the one with the spike that's going to spike me. Um, I think I'll clean it. Oh, that's better. Yeah, much better. Uh, Obviously it's a uh, new front cover, aluminium. Uh, what I'm just showing you there is the uh, blanking plate. There was a mechanical fuel pump which ran off the cam, um, off a, an eccentric on there which moved a lever up and down and uh, that lever came out into the fuel pump. I'll be using the original Stuart Warner fuel pumps for this. So uh, it's blanked off with a blanking plate. Uh, I must say, actually, that the blanking plate is the scabbiest blanking plate in the world. But it's the only one I've got. Stainless steel bolts. Lock washers and washers. And yes, that is a scabby fuel cover plate. Hello, what's this? No, hang on. No, put the engine in. Don't do not do that. That looks like a piece of 5mm thick 304 stainless steel and a permanent marker and a gasket. I can see where this is heading. Yep, I'm using the scriber. the permanent pen to dry. Whatever. Oh look out, centre pops. That means I'm drilling. I think I might be listening to Led Zeppelin as well. Don't tell anyone. It hit. So, drill. Let's uh, try out the step drill on 5mm stainless. Ooh, let's not forget the lube. Again, the camera is between me and the press drill, so uh, I'll knock it in a minute, I'm sure. So, make sure the centre pop was aligned, and off we go. Good, looking good. And then it just stopped. Try a bit more lube. Haven't got all the way through yet. And it doesn't want to do anything. 
Right. Plan B. So, we've now got a, uh, I call it an FC3 throwaway. Uh, it produces little uh, centre holes in lathes for holding with the tail stock. High speed steel, uh, but I've found that they're pretty good for using as uh, pilot drills. Let's try this baby. going in now, smoking. Automatic uh, zoom on the uh, camera, and so it decided to uh, focus on the edge of the steel plate there, and you can't see bugger all of it. You get the general idea, and one day I might clean that chuck on that drill. Look at the state of that. Oh, and we're through. Hurrah. Right, let's do the next one. step drill so I'm just going straight in with the uh, FC3 it's probably not called that now but when I was a fitter back in the day we were talking in the 80s when I did my uh, apprenticeship that's what we called it and that's what I'm calling it oh look at that yeah we're making swarf now oh yeah started cutting on the actual chamfered flutes there, so uh, a bit more pressure required and I just want to make sure I don't get it overheating. In fact, you'll see a discoloration on the chips and that means uh, that's most of the uh, heat being removed actually from the actual cut. That's what the chips, uh, sort of secondary purpose, apart from getting out of the way of the metal that you don't want there, uh, it uh, removes a lot of the heat and you'll see a lot of uh, blued or heat tarnished uh, swarf around. Well, that worked. Oh, look out, we've got a drill now. That's a 9.8mm drill, which I believe is a clearance for the uh, particular thread that's used on there. UN, God knows what, CF, Whitworth. That's a hey, UN. Get out. Oh. Hey, out. Get out. Get out. Yep, that's the cat from upstairs deciding it wants to investigate my shed. And so I might take get rid of uh, him. Right, let's see how this goes. Go for stainless. Oh yes, we're making swarf. Well, that was a good cut. I must have the uh, cutting speed about right. There are about uh, four speed adjustments due to some pulleys on the top of the uh, drill there. It's not adjustable speed, so uh, I just uh, turn it on and see what happens. Didn't centre that one over the drill very well, but uh, it is self-centering once you get uh, a bit of pressure on it. And again, no clamps because uh, it's quite a long piece of metal and uh, I can hold it down. Yay! What next? Oh, that's a slightly larger 
FC3 and I'm just using this just to get rid of the burrs and the chamfers on the edges of the hole so I'm using that it's probably about a 60 degree angle uh, just to create a chamfer on the uh, both sides of the holes There's a slight amount of what we call chatter. Uh, it's not a perfectly symmetrical hole, it sort of cuts it in facets. Uh, you should be able to see that uh, when the camera decides to focus correctly. But it's not going to be seen, so uh, who cares? I just wanted to get rid of the burr. Do the same thing on the other side. see the sort of uh, chatter marks there. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about that. There's a lot of uh, extra work that needs to be uh, gone into this before I can put it on. Notwithstanding the fact that I've got to cut it out. So here comes the uh, power hacksaw, powered by me. Uh, I could have shown you 40 minutes of me in a 25 degrees Celsius shed, sweating my arse off trying to cut this piece out, but uh, I just thought I'd speed it up. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm just using a G-clamp and a bit of wood against uh, the bench to uh, cut it or use it as a vise. Um, I have got a vise, we saw it earlier on. It's the one with the bent handle that started this uh, episode. Uh, but I find that uh, this is um, probably the best way because I'm cutting down and all this wharf goes on the floor and nowhere on the bench. I've got a few... Uh, sensitive parts like the engine block that I don't want lumps of stainless steel flying around in it. It's at this point I realised uh, a new hacksaw blade might be in order. I persevered, so eventually I'll get that little bit of triangle that bit out and then we can finally release the part from the sheet. inside the line. I'm about one or two millimetres away from it. The closer to the line, the less filing that needs to be done. Uh, and I'll be using the power file for that. You'll see that in a minute. Once I eventually get my way through this. Nothing special about the gloves. It just protects the hands from knocks and cuts from years of experience of uh, all that. You, you can still feel the cut of the hacksaw as you're doing all that stuff and there is just a pair of uh, gardener's gloves really. Yep, definitely need a new hacksaw blade there. Oh, nearly there. Let's try cutting it that way. No, 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 that didn't work. Let's go back to the original one. Yeah, I'll just go vertically. And then I realised I hadn't cut through far enough on the other side. I could have bent it off, but that's not me. And there we 
we go. So, we've now got to uh, get it to the right shape with the power file. Here comes the power file. There it is, powered by me. So again, it's 5 mil stainless. Uh, it's quite a rough, rasping file that I'm using. Uh, a little bit later I found that uh, I had a slightly different file which actually uh, bit into the metal a little better. Pretty rough finish at the moment, but uh, I just need to rough it out ready for uh, final shaping. And then I can uh, resume eventually getting the goddamn engine in. Bit of a distraction here, but uh, I was actually waiting for a few parts to arrive. Um, they have now arrived, so uh, I shall be continuing. file that speed in real life. So again, I'm just roughing it out to the line. It's a, probably about a half a mil off the line still. Notice when I actually put the part on, I made use of a straight edge uh, as much as possible. Uh, and uh, if anything, I should have really hacksawed this little corner off before I decided to do a mammoth filing session getting rid of it. But uh, I consider it a workout anyway. It's about an hour's worth of work compressed into all of this filing, and by the end of it, I'd felt like I'd uh, been in the gym. Okay, so I'll leave you uh, to carry on filing that. Will I ever get the engine in? Will I ever finish this part? Will I ever get this goddamn video edited and uh, posted on YouTube? Who knows? See you next time.